What's up, everybody? It's the after show, but later. It's your boy, D, and I'm joined again today by El Cucuy, and I think he might be a permanent co-host from here on out. Um, hey, man, I'd like to talk about that uh, Tyson-Roy Jones fight and the Nate right. Jake Paul. Yeah, how do you, how, what do you want to talk about? How do you feel about it? I, I, I like I think Snoop stole the show with his commentary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Weed, Weed Naps was a sponsor, and then they said it was the second most search on Google that day. You know what's funny? I was trying to find the um, I was trying to find Weed Maps. I forgot what it was called, but um, because I I had to go, I go what was that shit that Mario Lopez kept um, promoting, right? Right. So I typed in like W E like into Google, and Weed Maps popped up right away. Oh yeah, I, dude. Yeah, I was like, damn. And then it was funny because you said um, Snoop stole the show with his commentary. Yeah. There was, um, a different. There was a podcast I was listening to, right? And uh-huh. one of the dudes tried to take one of Snoop Dogg's lines, which he tried to like take it as his own, where um, he had said it was like two of my uncles fighting at a, a barbecue or something. And um, the dude right. on the podcast was trying to take it as his own. And then somebody else in the podcast was like, oh, yeah, I heard Snoop say that. And he was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Now? yeah, he called him up. Oh, that's good shit. Yeah, he yeah. does. He had some good lines, did he? Put some, th- some, put some Vaseline on that thing, Roy. And he just... I don't know, man. It was, it was different because I think that the HBO Showtime format and model that we've all watched growing up, if we've watched boxing, this was kind of like it still was boxing, but I don't know. The spin they put on it, it just 2020 is crazy. And, and, and what I wondered is how do the people back east that aren't like California and Nevada where weed's legal, mm. how did they – were they seeing marijuana sponsorship pretty much take over the fight? It wasn't Budweiser King of Beers. It was King of Buds. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, no. I, I, I was thinking the same thing. It, it was so normal, you know? Yeah, dude. And, and to me, it's groundbreaking. I mean, is that where we're at now? Mm-hmm. Especially, I mean, I know you're in California, but right here in Arizona, they just passed it um, with, with, you know, with the election and everything. So now we're going to be able to freaking um, – go to a 7-Eleven and pick up whatever you want you know it's, it's a yeah. trip for me it's, it's all new I mean I know you guys have, have had it for a minute recreationally but it's a trip you know well they what they did is 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 with with the weed maps and everything happening now they're just that just means they're taking more money so mm-hmm. before before 2016 they just didn't charge as much taxes when you went to the store to get it you just had a medical card which you could get for like 50 bucks now they don't recognize that card you pretty much have to have a state card um and uh but it's they're, they're, they're just, they're taking the money and you know, California and, and they're getting a lot of money from it. So it's more accepted, I guess, uh, socially, mm-hmm. which is a trip. Cause when I was a kid, I would have never thought we'd see this day. You know, Tom Segura actually has a joke about it. Um, have you listened to any of his stand up or not really? No, I haven't. Well, he has a joke where he says, uh, his kids aren't going to believe him when he's telling the story about, you know, he's like, Oh yeah. You know, um, one time I almost got killed when I was trying to buy weed. Right. And his kids are going to be like, why? Was 7-Eleven on fire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, dude. I mean, that, that, that's so true. Yeah. No, and it's funny because he was like, he was the joke. I mean, I know I won't do it justice, but it's funny because the joke's like, he's talking about like, no, I had to get into cars with people I didn't know, go into places, you know, in sketchy parts of town. And, you know, it's just, it's a trip, man. Pitch in money, right? You or, you or one dude knows the connect. Everyone pitches in five or ten bucks and just hope he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> hope he comes back. <laughs> like he's going to pick up some fucking meth or something, <laughs> and it was just weed. Yeah, you just hope he's coming back, right? And you're just waiting. <laughs> oh man, that's a trip. Um, what, yeah, what, no, but what did you, got, you think about the fights in general? Like, like the, aside from the weed maps, I, I thought, uh. I thought Jake Paul, I mean, he hurt Nate Robinson, but he hit him in the back of the head, too. So, I mean, he, he kind of rabbit punched him a little bit. And then, you know, uh, but he was sloppy. It was it was sloppy. And, and him talking about wanting to fight Floyd and Connor, I, I don't know. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. I just think that's – I don't think he's ready for that yet. Did you see that Logan Paul and um, and Mayweather just, just got um, green-lighted? I heard something about it. I didn't read all the details yet, but someone was telling me about the article. What what what'd they say? Um, I guess it's it's greenlit for um, February. It's really? Logan and um, Logan Paul and Mayweather is from what I'm hearing. My sources are telling right. me. <laughs> Who you got? <laughs> no Woj or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I got I got TMC TMZ notifications on my phone. Oh, that's great. <laughs> 
is, is it going to be exhibition or are they going to actually throw down for an account? Like, will, will, will Stain Floyd's record if he loses or is he just – in, in a safety zone where he has nothing to lose, really. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I just saw, like, a little notification, and it said that it was right. greenlit. So I go, oh, that's that's cool, whatever. And then I just kept on. I'll watch it. I mean, I'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. I won't pay for it, but I'll watch it. I yeah. saw I saw today George Foreman. Um, George Foreman said that he'd be willing to train Nate for the rematch. Oh, really? Yeah, I saw that today. I think I saw on TMZ. Rich said for a minute he thought Nate was dead. And, like, right. <laughs> yeah, no, for I, – I was worried. I was worried. Yeah, when I saw him laying there, I was like, holy fuck. Like, he really did lay there a little for a little longer than we're comfortable with, you know? Because it wasn't even like he was laying there and kind of, like, moving his feet. Like, fuck, that hurt. It was like, boom. He was, like, out, you know? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It reminded me of Apollo Creed and Rocky almost, you know, for no a minute. No lie. Yeah, no lie. And, and, you know, it was like, holy shit. Like, are we watching a real-life Apollo Creed right here? Because that dude was like – yeah, I know he was knocked out, but even when people knock out, you'll see them kind of like a leg right. twitch or something, you know? But the motherfucker was like, yeah, yeah he was not. Like, this is not good. No, nah, no, nah, but man, that was, it was a trip though. But you know what though? And, and a lot of people were giving, um, just like, like, besides, I know Kavino and Rich really liked it, but um, there's other shows I was listening to where they they didn't dig it at all. For me, I mean, one of the only Tyson fights I remember watching live was when he bit freaking um, Evander's ear off, you know? Oh, yeah, I see. I watched that and, one, too. And so I remember watching that as a kid, and I was like, oh, shit. But so for me, just like, I mean, of course, now we live with, like, YouTube and all that where we can just watch millions of fights or whatever and highlight reels and all that. I think the nostalgia in just in general was enough for, for everybody to be stoked on, you know? It, just the fact he was 54 and – I know he didn't get a knockout, but the way he was moving, he just – he still looked fierce and, and fast and powerful, and I, I don't know. I was just happy to see that even. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I feel you. No, it, it was it was definitely cool, especially to be like – everybody talks about, like, how much weight he lost, and he was like um, – I know on, on Joe Rogan's podcast, he had him in, like, I don't know, a year apart, you know, and he had him recently. He had Tyson in recently, right. and he said that. Tyson, when he was in the studio most recently, he was like, it was kind of scary to be around him because he just had like a different look in his eye. Like he was ready to knock somebody out, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and you know what? You know what else is kind of, you know, nice about it is Michael Jordan's not going to suit up tomorrow and put on that kind of performance in his sport. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you're not going to get any other professional athlete to be able to go and perform on that level at that age. So that that's that's what kind of intrigues me. Tom Brady's not throwing the football like that when he's fifty four. It's not happening. No, and think about it. Like you brought up Michael Jordan. Think about him like in like the latter years of his career. You know? He, as he, a he wizard. Was, you know? Right, right. As a wizard, he as a wizard he couldn't do it. You know, and, and it was of course he he's older, whatever, he's beat up and but to see, yeah, like you said, to see him come out like that, that was man, it was it was dope. Yeah, for sure. Jordan, Jordan, when he was a wizard, in reality, if he didn't have the the legacy that he had, he probably was like a good sixth man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right off the bench, like with what he was bringing that twenty eighteen points or whatever he was doing. Yeah, I remember seeing something on your um, notes. I I don't really remember what it said, but I had something similar on my notes about um about Thanksgiving from um, Kavino and Rich. Yeah. What happened? Well, it just seems Rich is jealous. He was hella jealous that episode. And hey, how hard is it to cook a turkey? It, yeah. I, I don't know, man. It was that was funny. He's such a dick sometimes, like where he was like Well, he's a hater. Yeah, you know? Oh, no. No. Well, even Spot, he's been on cooking shows and stuff. I mean, his skill is undeniable to try to mm -hmm. eat. Rich is making himself look bad when he does that. That's all he's doing is being he's being dickhead rich. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's just not really much argument. I mean, he's he's with Sonny Anderson and you know, Maria and Menounos, they make their little things together. I'm, I'm spot, spot gets down. There's just no, there's no denying it. Yeah. No, no. And you know, it's a trip because he was like, he, oh, he's such a condescending asshole, you know, because yeah. he even it threw out their, uh, where they, they like, first he was like, oh, well, spot, get a bigger place. You know, if you want to host it next year or whatever. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, he's such a dick. I'm like, spot makes like, you know, uh, only a percentage of what they make only from Sirius. Then they right. have they have ESPN, you know. Um, right. like, so when he throws out those little like those little jabs where he's like just being a dick, I'm like, 
oh, and you know that's Rich's personality, but at the same time, you're just like, oh, come on, man. That's kind of a low blow, you know? Like one of my homies would say, he's being a dirty vato. That's what he's doing. Yeah, no lie. No, and then he even tried to bag on him about the um, – and, it, yeah, it's kind of funny to hear it when um, Spot was like, well, I even have a leaf I could have brought out and put <laughs> in the table. I'm like, yeah, that one, I'm like, okay, you, of course you bag on your friends if you hear that. But Rich, I'm like, he was just reaching at that point. He was like, oh, yeah, you know, get a bigger place. And, oh, is, is, is it really hard to make? And then he was like, oh, a leaf is like something an old person would say. Like, he was just like, I was like, Rich, calm down, you know? When he, and he made himself look horrible because, like, dude, because two more people are over, he needs a bigger place. Is really, are you fucking, are you being serious right now? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah, it, for real. No, I, it just, I was like, man, I, when I heard that, I was just like, Rich, like, kick back, you know? It's like, I know they bag on him a lot yeah. or whatever about, like, his wife being, like, done, doing, like, more manly shit than he does and stuff. But, but come right. on, like, uh, there's just some things where I'm just like, I don't know, Rich being Rich, I guess, you know? Yeah, he just yeah he, he plays nice guy, but he he can be a dick. There's no doubt about it. Oh, you know what? It's so funny because I've been listening to, of course, the intro for years already. Right? Spots right. had the new intro, the quote unquote new one for like the last like five years since they moved to LA. Right. But it's so funny because it wasn't until like either yesterday or today I was listening to Straight Outta Compton, and oh, at shit. the end where they're like damn that shit was dope you know i was like oh fuck that's from the intro like yeah, yeah. i you know every time i've heard that i'm like i'm like i don't know if i never make it to the end of straight out of compton and i'm like switching like when i'm gonna have my little like mix or whatever i'm like when i heard that i was like oh shit it never it never i never calculated it or computed it or whatever the hell whatever the word i'm looking for you know right it never clicked it never clicked there we go Oh, you know what? There was something that Blind Brian said during the week uh -huh. um, where they were like, I think it was Rich who was like, hey, how do you know you're not getting ripped off, you know, whenever you're oh, getting changed? With changes with his ones? Yeah, and um, he said the only thing he carries in his wallet is 20s and 1s. Uh -huh. But I was thinking, how does he know the difference between a 20 and a 1? Is the texture different? Or does he fold the corners? Or what? what's his <laughs> trick, right? Yeah, you know, because, you know, I understand, like, out of all the denominations, okay, he narrowed it down, right? 20s and 1s. Right. But even then, I'm like, when you're blind, I'm like, try doing that shit behind your back and pulling out a 20 and knowing it's a 20. You know what I'm saying? I'm like. Maybe maybe, maybe he's got the uh, the wallets with the damn divider in the middle, and he has someone pre-sort like the 20s on one side. <laughs> he's got to have some kind of routine or something. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, I was thinking about it. Um, I, every time he calls in, I kind of like think about them where i'm like damn that must be crazy like i've met them a couple of times and it's just like it's weird when you're, you're talking to them and you're like looking at them and you're like damn you know this is these are people i listen to every day and like to physically be interacting with them seeing them i'm like i wonder right. how different it would be as like an experience for him to meet them you know like i mean they're not they're bumping elbows now now they're not even doing bro hugs you know he might not he might not even get a handshake <laughs> yeah yeah poor guy yeah, that might be as close as he gets to the handshake. And oh, man. COVID took that away. Yeah, man, that sucks. Like, because they had mentioned, I think Rich was like, are you ever going to, he was asking Covino if you're ever going to, um, like, go back to that, where you kind of, you know, give him bro hugs and, you know, whatever. And he was like, I don't think so, especially not for a while. So I'm like, damn, Blind Brian missed out on a Covino bro hug, you know? Yeah, he did. <laughs> what about a Feliz Navi job, bro? You still think that's a classic or what? Oh, that's so funny. Um, I actually have it right here on my notes. It says, uh, Rich Atrophy. I'll we'll talk about that in a minute. The next one says, Christmas Classics. And under that says, Feliz Nabi Job. That's class. I, I play it all the time, bro. No, you know, I think that's my favorite. It, I'm not sure my favorite Tickle Sack one, but my favorite, like, Christmas Tickle Sack one. I hear that shit, and I'm just like, oh, it's Christmas time. It might be my favorite overall, bro. I, that's that's yeah, it is. They always play December first, or the fancy play like the end of November sometimes. Oh, you know what? Actually, speaking of of this kind of shit, maybe it's because um, I know you primarily grew up on the West Coast, and they one thing that we never had, at least here in Arizona, was uh -huh. Dominic the Donkey. No, we didn't have that either, bro. They were no? talking. About, I can't relate. I don't have no clue what to talk what they're talking about. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know. And then Cavino said that Jordan had him play it a few times because she had never heard it, or she was like, "Oh, that shit was funny." 
Right. I, I don't know. Like, there's just some shit on the East Coast that we never got. That donkey, no. the donkey, I never heard it until, like, maybe a year ago when they played it. And I didn't like it then. I don't know, bro. <laughs> I'm good that shit over there. I mean, I don't know. If they like it and it's Christmas, whatever. But I wasn't vibing it. I mean, there's probably a reason why. It's different styles over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah definitely. No, it's uh, it cracks me up because I'm like, I never heard that shit ever. And then when they play it, you know, it's like for them, they're like, oh, it takes them back to when they were kids. I, I don't know, man. I <laughs> had never heard it before. Well, you know what? You know what I was thinking is what idiot brought a donkey into Christmas? Yeah. No shit, huh? That that don't match, dude. You know what I'm saying? They're like, hey. take a detox. Hee-haw, hee-haw. Yeah. Um, you know what's crazy? Even Rudolph, they had to put it, make his nose glow to make him cool. You know what I'm saying? Even Rudolph barely got accepted, let alone a donkey. I, I don't know. Bro. No shit, huh? What they're doing over there. But and he, and he had to fly. He had to fly and have a red nose, bro, and lead the way. Otherwise, he wasn't getting in on Christmas. I know. <laughs> that that sucks, man. And they're, they're over here on the East Coast, happy as hell with the donkey. Yeah. No, we're like, he needs to fly the presents uh, and lead the way. We're not down with it. No, it's, you know, it's funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just that the West Coast is a little more hood. Yeah, you know? I think so. <laughs> hey, they're like, what are you doing for me? <laughs> yeah. No, man. Like, oh, that's crazy. Um. Man, but honestly, though, I think it really was a good week overall. There was – um, let me see. They had – oh, it was it was funny because I had texted them about this one where they were talking about the stores asking you to donate, like your extra uh, bro. to round it up and all that shit. I work in retail management, and I refuse. I won't do it. When I top in the check stand to help out, I'm, I'm not doing it. I don't do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it, I don't do it. We, we we donate enough, dude. We donate our bread to the to the homeless, and we donate our, our you know our stale or old bread that we can't sell and mm -hmm. stuff. We donate that to like old people and whatnot. And um, and, and they're right, dude. They they steal your thunder because even with my store, I won't say their names. I don't want to blast them on the radio, but they don't say the customers donated X amount of money. They mm -hmm. they claim well, they'll they'll pitch in like so. Say they collect a certain amount of money, they'll they won't match it all the time, but they might throw in 50 or a hundred grand, but they take the credit. We donated X amount of money and that's just, it's not right, dude. Yeah, no. And it's not even, um, it's, I think in general, that's what they're doing. You know, right. like, 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 um, rich through Panda express under the bus, you know, where he was like, um, you know, they're taking that money and they're donating it to like a children's hospital or some shit, you know? Um, right. But they're saying, you know, Panda express donated a hundred grand when it's like, yeah really you know 30 cents at a time from every customer you know right well and and think about it bro how many places they're right how many places do you go where they ask that so if you went for your whole week right just take a week's worth of you know duties that you're doing while you work or whatever and you donated it every time you got lunch or grabbed a donut or a coffee or some gas or whatever it is how much is it send you back if you if you donated every time asked mm -hmm. it's just out of control Hey, what's funny is whenever I'm I'm in there, dude, and I'm just I feel like you know they seem cool. I don't want to piss nobody off because I don't I don't want to be a dick. But whenever they ask me, I'm like, hey, I got four kids. I was about to ask you the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what I was thinking? I was like, um, there was one. I, I it was like Petco or some shit that Rich was in, and they were saying uh -huh. or Spot or one of these fools. They were saying um, that they were like, oh yeah, do you want to donate five bucks because they're gonna give like a toy dog or some shit to a kid like a kid that right. won't have a christmas or some shit they have like a bin of stuffed animals and then you're like oh yeah you donate five bucks and like oh yeah this is now this one is gonna go to a kid and you know need or whatever i'd right. be like all right cool that one you're holding motherfucker send me a picture of little fucking tommy in the hospital holding that bad boy you know yeah with time stamp too i want to know it's mine <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's out of control it's like the thing to do they're just Every toy you turn around, I mean, and that's why I still tip good. But at the same time, it gets tough because everyone's always asking for something. Anytime you go on retail, everyone's asking for something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's just old after a while. Um, my girl, she got um, coronavirus, right? Oh, like, shit. She, it, was like, it was like maybe a month ago at this point. But um, she was knobbing hobs, you know, all over the place. Like, and I was like, hey look at me, I'm going to fucking die if you get it, you know? And I was telling her, be careful, you know? And she was like, for real though, right. she was like, like, she was just like, well, I don't know. She just didn't think it was a big deal, you know? We had her isolated, basically, me and my daughter, we had her isolated in the living room. But what sucked about that the most is my daughter, she's four. 
and we couldn't have her be around my girl. Right. So she would be like, she had like a, like a little stuffed animal and she would hug it, you know, and be like, Oh mommy, you hug that and I'll hug this or whatever, you know? Yeah. That ain't good. It's probably, it's probably t- uh, tough watching your kid go through that. Yeah. Probably have to cut most of that out or else I'm going to be single pretty soon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, one of the things that um, Black Adam said when he called in, that dude, uh, he's always been, like, a favorite caller of mine. I and like Black Adam. This week he said, uh, he, he said that he was inspired because Spot, you know, got in shape. Right. And then he said he went to the gym, and then he's like, fuck that, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> and what cracked me up was he said, this is the last shape I'm in. So he's going to fucking die in the shape he's in. <laughs> he's going for it, fuck it. Yeah, I need to get my routine back, man. COVID's kind of messed me up with the gym being closed. Yeah, I, w- I would say COVID's messed me up. But if you look at pictures from like a year or two years ago, <laughs> there was no COVID, you know. You know? <laughs> well, no, I, I did. I probably well, I, What I would always do part of my routine was go sit in the sauna after I at least rode the, some, some cardio, you know, mm-hmm. the bike, treadmill or stair climber or something. And, man, the sauna, that made all the difference in the world for me. Yeah. You know? everything dude that thing's been closed down since march yeah no it's, and then it's i don't know well i mean well you're in california right now aren't you yep man i can't imagine because here at least in arizona i know they're uh they're trying to open shit and then that's one thing that's kind of whack is they'll open things and uh-huh. then a week later it's closed and then a week after that it's open for a few days and it's kind of been like that with a lot of our gyms and a lot of restaurants and things we've been having Right. And it's kind of all over the place. Like, um, I can't even imagine how it is for you guys over there, you know? Oh, dude, they just shut us down for three weeks. No, uh, only takeout, no outdoor dining or indoor dining, no gym, barbershop, salon, it's done. And you're supposed to be in by 10 o'clock at night. That's crazy. No, and I work for a college out here in Arizona, right? And supposedly we're going to be, everybody's going to be back on campus on January 4th. Oh, shit. Yeah, which right now we're doing like one week on, one week off. So one week we work from home, one week right. we work uh, from the office. They're trying to minimize the peop- the amount of people on campus. Right. But I don't understand how they're thinking because for us, we get two weeks off during um, like Christmas. And it's just right. like, because we're like, like on a school routine, you know? Right. And so all the employees and like, you know, the, the full timers, you know, typically have families and shit, but I don't understand how they think the part timers and the student workers, the work studies, they think they're really just going to be chilling at home, like quarantined, you know, before we go back to campus. I'm like, no, they're not. They're going to be, you know, knobbing hobs, you know? For sure they are. For sure. Everyone's going to, I mean, I, yeah, it's tough, man. So we'll I, see. I work retail, so it's tough, man. I don't even know who's walking through that door. If they tested or they didn't test or, so I just make sure I just wash my hands, sanitize, but it's tough because you're kind of on the front line because, you know, we're putting stuff back. Hey, I don't want this. I don't want that. Like, we don't really wash it down before we put it back, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's tough right now. We'll see. Hopefully, they, hopefully it goes. I'm not taking the, I'm not taking the, uh, the vaccine, though, bro. I, don't, I just – I hope this thing goes away, but I'm not taking the vaccine. You don't want to grow a third nut? No, bro. I'm good. <laughs> I just – they, they haven't even found a vaccine for the common cold yet. You know what I'm saying? Or, or AIDS or cancer. They figured this out way too quick. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and honestly, I'm like, if a vaccine did come out, I'm like, I don't know. I, I definitely, I think I'm more, I'm leaning more Covino where I'd wait a minute, you know? Yeah, for sure. If I, you know, it, it would have to be some Guinea pigs first. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'll take my chances just, you know, if you're clean, I don't think, you know, you don't hang around with people a lot. You don't, you don't knob a lot of hobs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, 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 the more you do that, you're, you know, you're more at risk. I, and I did it. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm not going to sit here and act like I haven't. I've traveled. I've, I've been to Mexico, Hawaii. I've been, I've been around, but I've, I've tested negative. Yeah, no, no. I Hawaii, bro, and I had a horrible experience. I, uh, you got to have a negative test within 72 hours to get in there. Mm-hmm. and uh, they lost my test in the UPS. UPS lost the test, bro. Oh. So, and when I showed up, uh, as soon as you get off the plane and you walk, uh, they almost it's almost like customs in a way, but they've got these tables set up, and they've got uh, employees with tablets. And um, basically, you create this account before you get there, and then once you get your test results, you upload it. They see it. You're good to go. No quarantine. I showed up, man. They had lost my test. So they made me sign this agreement with 
you know, threat of going to jail if I violate it and told me I had to go straight to the hotel. Oh, and just, shit. Yeah, dude. So I, I went on the Hawaii.gov website. Um, I found one of their providers. They're sticklers, too. You can't just do the shallow swab. They want the PCR, the deep one. Yeah. And I got to, found one of the providers, whatever, man. Found the thing, went down there, tested, and um, s- submitted it. I was negative, And they still said, you're forced to quarantine because they don't accept post-arrival test. That's a trip, man. That, that's, oh, that sucks. That, left to the fullest like i'm in the middle on my views but that's pretty extreme when you're negative and there's people walking around that you don't know what they are but they're forcing you to go to a hotel room i i i just said you know what i busted out though i just printed it out put a copy in my pocket and i was just like you know what you guys are violating my civil rights um and so uh what about my business but fear of arrest dude if they get you they're gonna get you yeah that sucks man Oh, you know what? Okay, it was so funny because one of the days I was listening, Rich was saying how, um, how in reality, I guess when dudes picture a threesome, like they want like two chicks and themselves. Did you hear that conversation? Uh, but on right. like, porn, it's always like the opposite way. And Covino was like, "Hold up, hold up, hold up." He's like, "What?" <laughs> what? Yeah, he's like, "What are you watching?" And then Rich kind of changed the argument to like. Well, when people are searching for it, it that, like not necessarily me and Covino's like, and then the next day it was funny because I listened, I, you know, I listened to like all of them today. Right. And Covino was like, no, nah. he's like, I went back. He's on. Like, I listened. I even listened to the replay. He's like, and uh-huh. you were saying that you like watching two dudes. <laughs> it was just so funny. I, I don't know why I had on here. Um, Rich likes pancake ass. <laughs> I don't <laughs> even know what that means, but, um, what what would you do about Tommy if you were in Tommy's situation with Labanya and her being a vegan and into yoga? You think it matters? Mm, honestly, I think I mean it's not going to be long term. I mean, so no. like the way he was kind of like, you know, the thing that cracked me up is that you might as well go for it, right? Yeah, because he was thinking like like he was asking Pavino like, is it kind of weak for him to do yoga and shit? You know, and I'm like that's kind of like like kind of like i feel like an old school mentality when it comes to yoga i feel like so many people these days are doing it you know Mm -hmm. and not just like like hot young chicks you know i mean spot for example you know (laughs) yeah you know but um yeah i don't know i think he's young it ain't gonna be no marriage or nothing so i think he just should have fun you know he should go for it. I don't think he should. He's thinking too much into it. It's, I don't know why he's putting that much thought into it. He should just be trying to hit it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, definitely. Especially um, she's into yoga. She's flexible. She's hot. I mean, why not? I mean, he. I, I don't know. But you know what, though? It cracks me up because it shows you that, like, that we make fun of Kavino a lot, like, overthinking shit and being, like, a hypochondriac and shit. But it kind of shows you that it's kind of in his genes because Tommy is kind of like overthinking this situation like crazy when it's kind of like, why doesn't he just go for it and fuck it? You know? Like, like Yeah. Like Covino, he might do the same thing, you know? I don't know, mm-hmm. bro. I can hear it now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, well, just like you said um, the other day, Rich was like, oh, what if um, Jordan wanted somebody else um, to join you guys in bed or whatever? <laughs> right. And Covino's like, well, he's like, I don't think I would be with somebody who has those kind of values and shit, you know? Right. So. No, and I agree. Yeah, man. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. I don't, I got to, I know my kid's being kind of anxious and I got to get through it right now. Okay, but, cool. um, but man, it was cool to actually talk to you and see you in person, like right. person. Yeah. yeah that, for that's sure. kind of cool. Cause I'm kind of going off of like a random picture and uh, that was good, man. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Right. Later. Thank you. No problem.